question number time. We've got a lovely picture of a, a clock here. It was very uh, kind of them to include that for us. And the time it takes is given by this formula. The time it takes it takes for the pendulum to swing back and forth from one end from here to here is given by this formula. Ask us not to find the value of t, unfortunately. Ask us to find the value of l, which is kind of wrapped up in here. So let's rewrite this formula, but put all the information in. Uh, and it tells us that t is pi is 3.14. So our t is 2. So 2 is equal to 2 times pi, well, is 6.28, times the square root of l divided by 9.81. So we've got 6.28 times this number. So well, we've got to do two divided by. Uh, we've got to divide by 6. Point, so let's do that. Two divided by 6.28 gives us some horrible number. Um, so we know that 0. Point, we can leave it on the calculators, but I'm just writing it out. So you see it. Check you've done that. Uh, 31847. One three three seven five eight is equal to the square root of L over nine point eight one. So what well, to do the opposite of square root, I'm going to square it. So square my answer. I get zero point one oh one four two three nine nine two eight six. It's now one well, of the opposite of the square root, which is now just L divided by 9.81. And if I've got space, to get my answer of L, I'm just going to do the opposite of divide. I'm going to times that answer by 9.81. And therefore, L is equal to not, uh, 0 0.9949693. And it asks us, but it doesn't ask us. So let's just give it to you. Well, our question's in two decimal places. They've given it, so let's do this to two decimal places as well. So it's 0 0.99 to two decimal places. Okay? Well, the second bit asks us to do basically the same question, except to now make L the subject of the formula. So we've got to do it using algebra. So we've got t equals 2 pi square root of L over g. And we want to make the, the moment t is the subject, we want to make L the subject. So let's just do the same thing, but using algebra. t over 2 pi is equal to the square root of L over g. Opposite of square root is squared. So we get, excuse me t over 2 pi all squared is equal to l over g. So we can either write that this or we can square it. So that means we've got to square the top, square the bottom. So we get t squared over 2 squared is 4. Pi times pi is pi squared. That's l over g. And then to get l on its own, we just need to multiply everything on the side by g. So l is equal to g t squared, that means just t is squared, the g naught, over 4 pi squared. So they've asked us to do the same thing twice. Um, go back, check you understand how this works, and um, yeah, watch it again if necessary.